Okay, so oh, let me share the screen again. Uh, this is this map of the German aspirations versus uh, German reality. So talked about this, uh, how confident Hitler was uh, in World War I. A small German army had defeated a large Russian army in World War I. Uh, Hitler is, should come as no surprise, had zero respect uh, for the ability of the Soviet Union. Uh, Hitler's expecting a repeat. Uh, the, the, the nations that defeated Germany in World War I were the England, France, and the U.S., not Russia. Remember, Russia surrenders uh, to the German army in World War I, and Hitler expects the thing, same thing to happen. As you know, during the Great Purge, Hitler had killed his top generals. We think up to 30,000 members of the armed forces were executed, so the army leadership uh, is uh, demoralized, decapitated. The, the morale in the army is uh, very low. And... Um, November of 1939, uh, Stalin had invaded Finland, neighboring Finland. There was a four-month winter war. Uh, uh, the Soviet Union, Union annexed uh, some of Finland near Leningrad, but the war was a near disaster for the Soviet army. It went horribly. Uh, it was a real embarrassment. Uh, the smaller Finnish army uh, held off the larger Soviet army for months. And the Soviet army just looked awful. And so Hitler notices all this. Um, and during the same time, Hitler is, uh, during this period between September 39, when he attacks Poland and, and June uh, 41, when he attacks the Soviet Union, uh, Hitler also, um, he secures Germans German ties in Southeastern Europe. Uh, Hungary, Romania, and Slovakia all joined the uh, Allied uh, Axis nations in November of 1940. Uh, the other uh, aspect is that Hitler signs a tripartite uh, agreement with uh, Japan and Italy, which was a defensive agreement. And so Hitler has lined uh, uh, up all his ducks in a row uh, by the time of the Soviet invasion, or, or so he thought. Um, He's very frustrated that Great Britain has not surrendered, but he basically decides that, look, the, his, his whole thing had always been um, the Soviet Union creating this continental empire. And so he feels like he can just kind of let Britain be for a while, that he can turn east, that he can win a lightning victory in the Soviet Union, and then he can pay his full attention. Uh, to uh, to England and defeat England before the United States and gets involved in the war. So by the fall, the early fall of uh, 1940, uh, about the time the Battle of Britain um, is kind of petering out, uh, Hitler orders his strategists to develop um, an attack plan for the uh, Soviet Union, how it's going to attack the Soviet Union, what he calls the Jewish Bolshevik, Bolshevik regime. And remember, from Hitler's point of view, someone who is Jewish is a communist, someone who's communist is Jewish. They're equivalent uh, in his eyes, and they're uh, malevolent enemies. Uh, to the German Reich and to the German people in his eyes. And this is the propaganda that, that he's been preaching to, to the German people constantly since he's come into power in 1933. Remember, the population, the Jewish population of Germany was little less than 1% when Hitler comes into power. Very, very tiny. And the German people as a whole proved receptive to this anti-Jewish uh, rhetoric. Remember, they thought it was uh, the Jewish community that had stabbed uh, Germany in the back and that was responsible for the German defeat during World War I, and that there was a Jewish Bolshevik conspiracy uh, on a global scale uh, to attack Germany, that Jews ran Russia, they, they ran the United States. And so he builds up this, you know, really hatred, Hitler does, uh, that the German people uh, pretty much buy into, uh, especially the German army. 
He also feels like the Slavic people, they're, they're subhuman. He wants to, as you know, he wants to Germanize uh, areas of the Soviet Union, uh, such as Ukraine. Uh, he wants to starve the Ukrainians that, that live there, and he wants to colonize this area uh, with Germans in building, you know, this continental Europe uh, un under Nazi control, which is his, Russia was always a bigger deal to him than England ever was. Um, because England doesn't have the natural resources that Russia does. It doesn't have the areas where you can grow weed. It doesn't have the oil that Russia has. It doesn't have the other natural minerals, uh, mineral resources that uh, the Soviet Union has. So Hitler has always really been about the Soviet Union, he, and he's always considered Jews, uh, the Jewish community his enemy. So in, in attacking the Soviet Union, basically his, Hitler is going back to plan A. He's going back to plan A, which was always about uh, creating Lebensraum, living area, uh, living space for the German people and to uh, eliminate uh, uh, the Jewish community uh, in Eastern Europe. Um, so, as you know, he uh, he he plans the, the it, it takes a long time, the logistics of planning this uh, this operation, they really go on from September uh, 1940 until June of 1941. It takes a long time to plan an invasion such as this, logistics alone, you know, how do you move the millions of men that are necessary? But Hitler makes a major strategic uh, mistake. And what one of the doctrines of the military is you, you have to select and maintain a str strategic objective. Let me say that again. You have to select and maintain a strategic objective. And Hitler refused to do that, or he proved unwilling to do that. So as you'll see, he goes when he goes into the Soviet Union, and you can see it from this map, uh, he basically has three German armies with uh, uh, allied with uh, 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 members uh, from the Italian army, the Romanian ar army, the Hungarian army. Uh, but the bulk of the troops that go in the Soviet Union were uh, German. They go in, in three thrusts, uh, the north towards Leningrad, uh, Army Group Center towards Moscow, and then Army Group South towards Kiev and Ukraine. And of course, Kiev is still very much in the news today. And so instead of uh, selecting and maintaining one strategic objective uh, in the Soviet Union, let's say Ukraine, what Hitler does is he divides up his army into three. He, he goes after what today is uh, uh, St. Petersburg. It was Leningrad at that time. Uh, that, that's a part of his army, the, the northern uh, part of it, the northern axis, the center axis goes towards Moscow, and the southern axis goes towards Ukraine, and then towards the oil fields of, of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. You know, even if uh, Hitler had captured Moscow, Stalin still would have been able to move uh, east into the Urals. But that's neither here nor there. Thank God Hitler didn't capture Moscow. So these three army groups, the, the north, the center, and the south, uh, may, are made up of more than three million uh, German soldiers and half a million troops from Germany's allies, including Finland. We don't think of Finland supporting Hitler, but they hated Stalin because of Stalin's attack on Finland and the capture of Finnish land. Uh, Romanian soldiers, as I said before, Hungarian and Italian. Uh, we Hitler actually had pretty weak partners uh, in the attack on the Soviet Union. The Italian army, the Romanian army, and the uh, Hungarian army didn't uh, equip didn't acquit themselves very well in, in the Russian invasion, uh, especially um, the next year in 1942 and 1943 when we had the battles of Stalingrad and Kursk that we haven't really gotten to. So as you know, the Stalin ignored the many, many warnings uh, that he had received. It was it's hard to keep uh, an invasion of three million men secret. And Stalin's getting all kinds of information that uh, the Soviet Union is about to be invaded. He just he won't believe it. You know, the old joke, the 
uh, the Nile isn't just a river in Egypt or denial, you know, the, uh, and, and Stalin was in denial. Um, and, um, so he's, he just refuses to believe it. And, um, it turns out to be a surprise attack. Uh, 3,500 tanks, 2,700 aircraft, 700,000 horses. Isn't it interesting, um, that horses were still such a, uh, a major element of mobility in the German army. We think of the German army as being really mechanized, and it was uh, by 1940. Um, but um, horses are are still a major air a major component of, of German mobility uh, in, in, during the invasion of the Soviet Union, um, and. Hitler was very confident about how the invasion would go. He said that when the invasion occurred, the world would will hold its breath. Um, and, you know, he had good reason to be happy uh, how it went initially. Uh, the German army makes huge strides uh, at north, center, and south. Uh, they moved 50 miles on the first day they, uh, towards Leningrad. Um, they capture uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Soviet soldiers. Uh, Stalin had stopped the Soviet Union or Soviet soldiers, the Soviet military from, from putting itself into defensive positions because he thought that would be provocative to Hitler. Um, and so uh, Hitler, his, his whole argument was, we, we have only to kick in the front door and the whole rotten edifice will come tumbling down. So this is Hitler's thinking. You kick in the front door and the entire edifice of the Soviet Union would come tumbling down. Well, of course, he proved completely wrong in this. The Soviet Union proved uh, remarkably resilient. Also, just in terms of territory, um, Moscow is about a thousand miles from Berlin, uh, just in terms of territory, but also in terms of population, uh, in terms of the size of the army. Hitler, in short, uh, he just bit off more than he could chew. And he's willing, he's going against an enemy that is willing to do, it's Stalin, anything it takes to win uh, uh, in terms of uh, throwing his troops into battle. Stalin really didn't care about how many of his soldiers died as, as long as they defeated um, uh, Hitler. So in going against Stalin, uh, uh, Hitler runs into an enemy that is uh, just as ruthless as he is.